Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together to begin our day with a small time devoted towards learning more about the blessings that we have in the Lord Jesus. And today we're going to turn to Psalm 45 7 as we read the morning passage from Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. Well, let us begin today with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have guided us through another uh, Lord's Day and another Monday, and here we are on Tuesday morning. And our God, we ask your blessings be upon us, that you would strengthen us in every way, that you would show us what it means to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and how that is such, not just good news, but the best news. And may we value it with the value it deserves. And to God, we pray as we study your word and think through your word that your Holy Spirit would open our hearts and minds to receive your truth and that we would love what we hear. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today, again, we turn to Psalm 45, 7. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Be angry and do not sin, is what Paul writes in Ephesians 4, 26. There can hardly be goodness in a man if he is not angered by sin. He who loves truth must hate every false way. It only makes sense. Remember how our Lord Jesus hated it when temptation came. Three times it assailed him in different forms, but he responded with, be gone, Satan. He hated it in others, no less fervently by showing his hatred often more in tears of pity than in words of rebuke. Yet what language could be more stern, more Elijah-like, than such words as, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers. Christ, we know, hated wickedness so much that he bled to wound it to the heart. He died that it might die. He was buried that he might bury it in his tomb. And he rose, that he might forever trample it beneath his feet. Christ is in the gospel, and that gospel is opposed to wickedness in every shape. Wickedness arrays itself in fine clothes and imitates the language of holiness. But the precepts of Jesus, like his famous scourge of small cords, chase it out of the temple and will not tolerate it in the church. So too, in the heart where Jesus reigns, what a war is waged between Christ and Satan. And when our Redeemer shall come to be our judge, those thundering words, depart from me, you who are cursed, that are indeed but a prolongation of his life teaching concerning sin shall manifest his abhorrence of iniquity. As warm as his love is to sinners, so hot is Christ's hatred of sin. As perfect as is his righteousness, so complete shall be his destruction of every form of wickedness. Our Savior is a glorious champion of right and a destroyer of wrong. For this cause God has anointed Christ with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Amen. One of the neat things that Spurgeon says in here that's so important for us to remember is the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ hated sin so much and he hated seeing sin in his people so much that he came to lay down his life, that it would be washed away. When David cries out, 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. He has in himself a heart which is after the Lord. And the Christian should have, should have this same holy hatred of sin. We should flee from it. We should want nothing to do with the wicked works of darkness. It should not be named even amongst our own souls. And we have to ask the question whether or not we are willing to hate sin like Christ hates sin. So often we are like the young lady in the book of Genesis who wants to take her household idols with her. We are like Achan who wants to hide the treasures under the floor of our tent. We have our cake and eat it too. We want the grace of Christ, but we want the pleasures of the flesh. And this is not how it should be, dear Christian. In the uh, in the worship help that I sent out this morning uh, by email and uh, on Substack, spoke to this as well. Sin is not something to be trifled with, and it's not something to be played with. We must be mortifying the flesh. We must be destroying the sin in our midst, because that is what our Savior would have us to do. And we do that again because of the example that he has given to us. And so, brothers and sisters, as we begin this day, and as we look forward to the rest of this week, and ultimately to the Lord's Day that is to come on the 11th, what are we doing to prepare ourselves for that? What are we doing to consider again the ways of the Lord and to understand that God has called us in his mercy and has given us the sufficiency of his grace to deal with these things? And so as we come to a close in our devotion this morning, we have again something we need to consider. What do we love more? Do we love the holiness of our Savior? Or do we love our sin? In the way that we order our lives and the way that we make decisions will show which one means more to us. And so let us hear again the words that we read from Psalm 45. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. And if this is the desire of our God, then it should be our desire as well. May the Lord bless you today. May he keep you in his providential care. And may you, as you read the word, as you think upon the word, and as you are blessed by the word of Christ, may it dwell within you richly. And may you find peace in the great and lovely testimony that we have from our living and our true God. Take care and God bless.